Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Young. I'm a former board member for the Friends of the Boundary Waters Wilderness. The Friends is a nonprofit working to protect and preserve the boundary waters and surrounding ecosystems. Our work focuses on the pillars of people, community, and wilderness. And I am going to talk to you today about making great meals in your boundary waters on your boundary waters canoe trip adventure. So I'm happy to join you today to do that. I was last in the Boundary Waters this past August. I was supposed to go to the Quetico, but of course the border was closed. So I spent four days on Knife Lake and one day on Birch Lake with some friends. And we even visited Dorothy Moulter's Island for lunch one day and we were channeling her strength and resilience. It was really a wonderful um, lunchtime on the island. So cooking good camping food requires a bit of planning, but it's all worth it. The constant paddling and the expended energy on the portages equals for a healthy wilderness appetite. So do you wanna spend a little extra time to prepare a meal or do you wanna grab a protein bar on the go? Let's get started. So no matter whether you leave for three days or for two weeks, your basic cooking equipment remains the same. Here's a list of the basics that you will need. And I'm not going to read the whole list to you, but I'm gonna highlight a few. A good stove and a cook kit are very, very important. I'm probably on my fifth or sixth cook kit over the years, but I've settled on my third, third stove. That's a Snow Peak 2.0, it uses butane gas. Another thing that's really important, if you go to the Quetico, there aren't any fire grates, so you have to bring your own. So don't forget a water filter as you will wanna use filtered water in most of your recipes and a small plastic tablecloth usually comes in very handy at your campsite. A few things that make a big difference in how much food to buy are like how many people are involved and what kind of eaters are they? Younger people and men eat larger quantities of food and I'm sure that doesn't surprise you. I'm sure that um, you wouldn't think that a group of eight women, including two teenagers, would run out of food, but we did one time on the last night. I couldn't believe it. So one of the things that you want to consider is fresh or frozen meat, maybe, on your first night. And then you also want to ask yourself while you're meal planning is, can you change your meal from cooking over the fire to cooking on a stove and a frying pan? Because maybe you might have a fire ban. You might be driving up there and they call a fire ban. So make sure that you can maybe interchange your meals. You don't have to do, be able to interchange all of them, but just think about it ahead of time and you can always throw some macaroni and cheese in if you want to. On the last summer trip that I took, I was one of four women and we're very healthy eaters. So we were out for four nights and five days and we met ahead of time. We chose four dinners that are on the slide and then we chose two extra meals. We were hoping to catch some fish, which we didn't. So breakfast and lunch are pretty much the same every time we kind of have our basic menu. And we do eat pancakes and some hot couscous in the morning though for breakfast. I just wanted to show you this slide. I found this in a book and I copied it word for word from a book about a trip that two gentlemen took to Algonquin Park. And I noticed the fifth item on the list, it's called Klim. I thought, now what is that? Well, I looked it up on the internet and I found out that it's powdered milk and it was used in logging camp. So they brought it with them on their trip. It's made in Toronto, Canada. So this is quite a different list than what we bring nowadays. I can't even imagine bringing seven pounds of bacon and four pounds of butter but prunes are on the list and I actually bring prunes. So let's keep going here. After I shop, this is what my dining room table looks like. I separate everything into breakfast and lunch and dinner. And this is actually a picture before I do all the recycling and take, up, take out all the packaging. And you know, that just adds a lot of space and a lot of weight. So you can get rid of a lot of, a lot of packaging. I put the fresh fruit in the Ziplocs and I either put them in the refrigerator or the freezer until I need them. I cook the eggs at the last minute for hard boiled eggs. You can always bring a real, um, you can bring eggs if you crack them and put them in an Nalgene bottle and freeze them if you'd like. I also bring salsa for a couple different recipes and I put those in the Nalgene bottle at the last minute right before I leave home. 
Here's a slide showing you that some items actually stay in the original packaging, like the hash browns. Just leave them in there because you're actually going to add hot water to those if you, if you brought this particular item. There's a picture of Gorp. I always mix the Gorp and give everyone their own Ziploc bag with their name on it. That way they can't say somebody's eating too much Gorp. It works out really good. I taped the Zatarans yellow rice instructions right on the package and I wrote Zatarans yellow rice. So that way I got rid of that cardboard. And then you can see why the bacon box gets recycled. There's just way too much, way too much cardboard. So one of the things that you can do is you can make some really elementary meals or that you can use your dehydrator to allow you to bring some other things like hamburger. So with hamburger, you cook and you rinse off the fat as it will keep a lot longer without the fat and you, I put it on a paper towel on my dehydrator rack, and then I put it in the dehydrator for anywhere from four to eight hours. I try to break up the chunks so they're small. So notice how it gets very, very small. It's dry and very sharp. And I've tried putting it in the vacuum sealer bags before, but that doesn't work. It just breaks through. So I just put it in a Ziploc. So you can use the dehydrated cooked, I always cook it. Um, and so you can always, use it for spaghetti and tacos and chili and pizza and many, many more things. I've also learned recently that you could just boil the meat in, the, in water for like an 15 minutes and that will cook it and then rinse it off really well. So that's another way to do it instead of cooking it in the frying pan. I just wanna tell you a little story about my dehydrator. It kind of looks like a microwave. I bought it in 1977 at the Olmsted County Fair in Rochester. So it's been around for 44 years, just like I've been going to the Boundary Waters for 44 years. So it's really worked well for me. So lots of people have vacuum sealers these days and a vacuum sealer works really good for sauces. So to vacuum seal a liquid or a sauce, you have to freeze it first. So I froze it in those containers, then I took it out and I slipped it into the bag and I, and I uh, vacuum sealed it. Now, some people actually make pre-made meals like stew and chili and um, spaghetti sauce and stuff like that. And they put it in the sealed bags and they bring it with them and they either reheat it in water while it's still in the bag or they would open it up and put it into a one pot meal. So there's a, a lot of ways to use your vacuum sealer when you're going to go camping. Be sure and repackage your liquids in plastic Nalgene bottles and put them in Ziplocs. I always double bag the syrup, by the way, and then put them with their respective meals. Be sure and label them if you're the only person that's preparing the food because some people not, are not gonna know the difference between the canola, canola oil and the olive oil. They'll probably notice that the balsamic vinegar is red though. So let's talk about breakfast. Breakfasts for us have been oatmeal, hard boiled eggs, pancakes, coffee, tea. You can see we're making pancakes there on Lonely Lake in the Quetico. It was a beautiful morning. We love the pre-cooked bacon. It tastes great with pancakes and it limits the amount of bacon smell in camp. Breakfast bars are good for a morning if you're going to be leaving on the last day or you want to get out of camp really fast. So otherwise you could up your game and even make some scones for breakfast. Well, and we'll talk about that later. Here's a picture of some of our breakfast choices on my green plastic tablecloth. So notice on the lower right, there's some instant oatmeal. We brought instant oatmeal this, on this last trip, but a lot of times I bring Bob's Red Mill muesli. And so you can put it in one pot, add the water, cook it. And, and a lot of people really love that. It's a lot healthier for you too. There's the prunes. So for the pre-cooked bacon, you just heat it up in a pan and set it aside in a container that will keep it warm. And then you can make your pancakes. And if you were lucky enough to find some blueberries in camp and maybe some walleye in the lake, um, you'd have a great meal. So this past wild blueberry season was not very good. So, and I knew that ahead of time. So I actually brought some dehydrated blueberries with me that I used in the pancakes and in the scones. It worked out great. So, a lot of times I take a tow into the Quetico or into the Boundary Waters. And when I take a tow, we need a quick breakfast in the morning. So here was our first breakfast consisting of some homemade muffins that 
Kathy made, and some hard boiled eggs and coffee. And on the last morning, we had some hot couscous and with fruit and some coffee. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about how I did that. The way I made the hot couscous was with a cozy and of course a pot. First I made it in the pot and then I turned the heat off and I put it in this cozy. Now a cozy is made with some Reflectix on the left slide there and some aluminum tape. I bought the Reflectix at a local hardware store by the foot. I measured it, I used a marker, I cut the aluminum tape and I made an upper and a lower to fit over my particular pot. Now you could go onto YouTube and this is how I found out about it. How to make a pot cozy by Kevin Outdoors. He's a Canadian gentleman who loves to camp and he hikes and he canoes and he really uses a, um, a cozy a lot in his food preparation and I found it really interesting. And so I decided to make one and it worked really well. I'll be bringing it with every single time. This basically allows your food to continue to cook without using any more fuel. So you might cook it for five to 10 minutes and then you let it be in your cozy for the next five, 10, 15 minutes. It's a really cool thing. You should, you should look it up. It's called How to Make a Pot Cozy by Kevin Outdoors. So here's my stove, the Snow Peak 2.0. I like how small it is and how efficient it is. And I really like using butane canisters. I take three stoves with me for large groups for like six to nine people. I do own a couple of jet boils. I really like those also. I have a regular size and a, and a jumbo size and those are really nice. Let's go on here. I wanna show you the butane canister sizes. Now these are two of the three sizes that they have. They're, this is the eight ounce and the 16 ounce version. They also have a four ounce version, but I find those too small for my size group and it might be perfect for your size, especially if you have one or two people. I also use this crunch it, which, is, which punches a hole into the canister when it's empty. And that way you just make sure that there isn't any gas in there. Works really good. The only, I would say the only Bad thing about the snow peak is that, is that it doesn't work really well in cold weather, but I don't do a lot of winter camping, so it doesn't bother me. Just to let you know that for each eight ounce butane canister, it will burn approximately two hours on high and four hours on simmer. So here's my GSI Outdoors Pinnacle Camper Cook Set for four people. Um, GSI stands for Incredible Gear, Inspired Solutions, and Never-Ending Innovations. This kit includes, and as you can see, two pots and two lids, a frying pan, four plates, four bowls, four cups with lids, one pot gripper, and, and the case which can double as a wash pan. They also have a set for two people. I'm going to show you how it gets put together by magic. I really couldn't do it this fast. I had someone speed this up for me, but you can see how it's just so slick. I actually own two of them because I do go with eight people quite a bit. So here's my pot on the stove. It is titanium. This particular cook set is titanium. So you do not want to put it on a wood fire. I use my griddle on the wood fire and remember I had pancakes on my griddle over the fire, but you wouldn't wanna use this pot on a, on a wood fire. And on the right side of this slide here, this is my latest GS I find, a gourmet knife and cutting board set. It only comes with one cutting board, but I slipped one more in there. And my friends just love this this summer. Um, the three knives, we were able to cook, uh, cut a lot of items at the same time. And it's really a nice set. So consider that. Um, for giving as a gift sometime to somebody, for the person that has everything. So let's talk about lunch. Lunch is basically kind of make your own out of all that's on that place, plastic tablecloth. Pita bread and tuna fish is a big hit with all the groups that I go with. I buy the mayonnaise packets at the deli. Since you can't bring a mar uh, jar of mayo, I don't bring a cooler on any of my trips. You could also bring some mustard packets if you wanted. We bring lots of crackers and cheese, beef jerky, beef sticks. You could bring summer sausage. And then we really like the carrots and the snap peas and the radishes for fresh veggies, veggies which, you know, they last two or three days. 
uh, if it's not really hot, it's really great. Another thing that you could do that um, you could, that's on my list here is bagels with cream cheese. And if you want to really make it even a little more gay, um, a little more gourmet, you could add some salmon that's in foil. We also bring the Pringles and wheat thins and, um, and there's the gorp too. So here's the tuna and the chicken in the foil on the upper left part of the slide, which we really use a lot. And there's, there's also for tuna, there's buffalo sweet and spicy and zesty lemon pepper tuna that you could try. And I also put a picture of the Idaho and mashed potatoes on this slide because they are really, really great. Um, I really like these potatoes. Um, give them a try. You can find them. You can find everything that's on here in the, in the grocery store. If you don't have a lot of big peanut butter eaters, the GIF to go is a small size that you could bring. And of course, I had to show the spam. A lot of people still like spam. Well, you can't bring it in the can, but you can certainly bring it in the foil. Someone asked me to talk about the 30 and the 60 liter barrels for food storage. And they've been around for quite a while and I use them both. The 60 liter is on the dock in the picture and it is approximately about the same height as your regular packs. It can be a bit heavy if you overload it, so you should be careful. The 30 is a lot smaller and I specifically use it for lunch. It's really great for lunch. So, and it's good to use for day trips mm -hmm. and the cover doubles as a table or it could be used as a cutting board. So get a good harness and to make sure it fits well. Now that mine on the right there, it's pretty padded. It's really, really comfortable. Technically, these are not bear proof, but I feel pretty safe using them in canoe country. I see them all the time. Be sure and make your lunches easy so that you can bring them on your day trips. Here's a wonderful, wonderful view from the top of Thunder Point of Knife Lake this past August. I met lots of people up there. It was great. We had a wonderful day and you can see Knife Lake. This is going west. You can see those two beautiful islands. It's just a remarkable view and it's about a 10 minute hike up to the top of this viewpoint. So check it out if you're ever on Knife Lake. Let's talk about appetizers. Some people are probably say, saying appetizers. Well, we got into appetizers about 20 years ago. The first appetizer we had was Asiago cheese and water crackers. My friend Russ brought them and we've been bringing that ever since. It's a staple. Some of the other things that you could bring for an appetizer can be as simple as pretzels or it can be quite elaborate as fresh bruschetta. So that's what we had on our first meal. For our first meal, our first night last August, we had some fresh bruschetta. And let me tell you how I, how I made it. I toasted the bread at home. I cut it, I toasted it, I put it in a Ziploc bag. I froze the real mozzarella cheese ball. And then I brought fresh tomato and shallots. And I brought those whole and then I diced them when we got to the campsite. And I had the oil and the red balsamic vinegar separate, if you remember from the plastic bottles. I mixed those in. I used fresh basil from my garden and chopped that up and then added some real minced garlic. And voila, you have this fresh, fresh mozzarella um, and tomato and basil appetizer. And it's just, it's wonderful. And throw in some wine and you've got a great happy hour. So Maybe you noticed on that last slide and on this slide, I'm using a table. It's a Helinox table. It's a very small table that I bought a few, number of years ago. And you know, sometimes mother nature gifts us with a natural kitchen table in our campsites. However, it doesn't happen all that often. And this is very lightweight, very easy to put together, very easy to transport. It's a very nice alternative. So, you know, if you are looking for something that really adds a little, some value to your camp kitchen. This is one of the things that does that. So let's talk about dinner. Our first night dinner this past August was no name steaks. And then we took some potatoes, onions and broccoli and cooked them in foil over the fire. And I sauteed some mushrooms in a wine sauce in a frying pan on my stove. 
And remember, mm -hmm. we had the fresh bruschetta beforehand for happy hour. So we had a, just a really wonderful meal. We did not have a salad this night, but we usually have a salad every night. So one of the things that I learned this year from another person is that when you make a foil dinner or potatoes with veggies, like we did, you could add, add a liner of parchment paper. You know, that stuff that you put on your cookie sheet liner and put that inside the foil and then fold it all up and then cook it over the fire. It won't burn and it keeps it a lot steamier. So I just thought that was a great idea and I'm going to do that from now on. So one of the other nights we had chicken quesadillas. I use that chicken in the foil and then I mix it with the salsa that I bring. And then I add cheddar cheese slices. We bring the hard cheese and then we slice it. So what you do is you would spread the chicken and the salsa and layer the cheese on half of a tortilla and then fold it. If you try to put it on one whole tortilla layer everything on there and put another tortilla and try to flip it, believe me, it doesn't work. We tried. So we came up with the half a tortilla method. It works great. You are going to want to oil, you are going to want to oil your pan. That really helps it so it doesn't stick. Although you can see that a little cheese slides out of there and it gets a little sticky. You could also do this in a frying pan. We've done it in a frying pan, uh, whether it's raining or we just, it's a fire ban. It's a, one of those meals that you can work either way on the fire or on your stove. And that's a fabulous meal and we added a salad with it. Here's the setup for pizza. Now pizza, a lot of people do pizza and there's lots of ways to do it. And this is the way that, that we do it. So you wanna prepare everything first before you start your pizza dough. So cutting up the onions, cutting up the mushrooms, um, cutting up your pepperoni, mm. if you don't bring the pepperoni slices, Think, just mm. things like that. And then we buy the pizza dough in the dollar bag, which you just add a half a cup of hot water to. And that makes it so easy. So, and then I use disposable foil pans, the rectangular small size. And I use two pans for four of us, which is a bit much, but we managed to eat most of that pizza. I usually bring three pans and make three pizzas for six to eight people. So I bought um, when you do that, you buy the three bags of the pizza dough. So this video is going to show you, and it's very fast, so I'm going to explain to you a little bit, is that you need to have your fire prepared and ready to go before you put your crust on the fire. You want to put your crust on first for about 10 to 15 minutes, moving them around. You cover it with foil. You want that crust to get baked before you put the rest of the ingredients on. Then you put the, and once you put the ingredients on, you put it back on your fire. So I'm gonna show you this video. These are two of my friends from this past summer. We've already prepared the dough. Everything else is ready. They've oiled the pans and here we go. They're spreading out the dough. They put the foil on it, they cooked it. Then we put the sauce on and then we put the ingredients on and we covered it back up with the heavy duty aluminum foil. We moved it around for another 10 to 15 minutes, took it out and we cut it. And it's just, it's a really fabulous way to cook the pizza. Um, I, I just can't, I know there's other ways to do it, but this is our favorite, so. And I also used a little bit of the leftover fresh bruschetta and mixed that in with the sauce and that was really good. Well, here's a basic um, spaghetti with meat sauce recipe, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's just fabulous. Towards the end of a meal, towards the end of a week, um, we used, we did this on our fourth night. We used one pot for the spaghetti. And of course we used angel hair spaghetti, which helps the, because it's thinner, the spaghetti cooks faster. And then we used one pot for the sauce. I used a packet of dried spaghetti sauce. We added the vacuum sealed tomato paste and the water and then the rehydrated cooked hamburger. And also brought some grated Parmesan to throw on the top. And the cabbage salad works really, really well with this meal. Cabbage keeps longer than lettuce. So we tend to use lettuce salads the first two nights and then we use cabbage salads the remaining nights. So one of the other things we like to do is we usually have a fish meal 
prepared and we didn't, we got skunked on this particular trip, but I always bring shore lunch, a little flour and some oil to cook the fish in. This is my son, Michael on Saganagans Lake in the Quetico with lots of fresh walleye. And you can cook it on the frying pan like he's doing over um, the stove, or you could actually do it on a fire um, on your griddle. And if you have a larger group, like six to nine people, and you've caught a decent amount of fish, you probably will want to do it over a fire. And one of the other things that you can do before you cook the fish on the fire is cook those hash browns. The hash browns are wonderful on the griddle. You cook those first, and then you could put those in a pot and keep them warm and then cook your fish and you've, you've got a great meal. So back to the lettuce and cabbage salads with dinner. We just love to have some fresh veggies and fresh lettuce or cabbage on our trips. Cabbage stays really fresh. So you keep it whole, you keep it in your food pack until you're ready to use it. And then for the first few nights, I've started buying those smaller lettuce and cabbage mix and mixed with kale. And they just have, they, they just work a lot better than just bringing completely romaine lettuce uh, bags. So there's a lot of choices. One of the things that's really basic, but keep your food pack in the shade. It really helps keep your, your cabbage and your lettuce and, and your cheeses a lot nicer if you keep everything in the shade, which means you might have to be moving it around at one, while you're in camp. That's impossible to do when you're in the canoe, I know that, but um, just try to do it while you are in camp. This is a picture of one of those pre-packaged cabbage Brussels sprouts. It's got kale in it. It's really, it's really a great package. And this one happens to have poppy seed dressing in it, but there's a lot of choices out there and they work really great the first few nights of your trip. One of the other things that we always bring is soup. Now here's a picture of some chicken noodle soup with dumplings. So you can make dumplings out of bisquick. You bring some bisquick, put it in a Ziploc, just enough so that when you get to camp, you can add some water, you can knead it, and then you cut the corner of the Ziploc and you squirt it into your chicken noodle soup mix. Now you might have to add some more water um, in fact, I would say add some more water than, it, than what it calls for and then cover it and cook it for about 10 minutes and you are going to have this wonderful chicken noodle soup with dumplings. Now, one of the other uh, soups that's really good to bring is, oh, a, um, a, a cream of wild rice soup. You could do that. You could bring a potato soup and bring wild rice with you and make it into a cream of wild rice soup. And you could add some of that chicken that's in the foil. There's just so many things that you can do. We like the Bear Creek brand. There's a lot of brands out there, but that's the one that we really like. I just want you to take note on the cabbage salad that's on the right, the lower right pan. That's the Asian um, cabbage salad that we make towards the end of the trip. We use the ramen noodle mix. So we break apart the ramen noodles. We cut up onion, we bring sesame seeds, and then we make a dressing from the chicken ramen noodle soup makes the little packet and we add that with vinegar and oil and it just makes a great cabbage salad. So one, you know, small head of cabbage can actually make two or three meals for a cabbage salad. So let's talk about desserts and you know, what can we say? There's so many choices for desserts. There's a lot of cookies and chocolate bars that you could bring. One of my personal favorites is Fig Newtons. The Lorna Dunes, which is a shortbread cookie. Um, you can make it like a sandwich with Andy's mints. Oh my gosh, it's really fabulous. You can also make some cake or some brownies, which I'm gonna talk about in a few minutes or some scones. And I've brought pudding many, many times over the years. Pudding with instant milk is a really easy thing to do. So I upped my game a number of years ago with a lightweight Dutch oven, which is really fun to cook with. I've made cake, I've made brownies, I've made scones, I've made cornbread. It requires some wood, some coals, and some patience, and a little bit of time. So you, wanna, you want to do this when you know you have a lot of time in camp. It's well worth it though. If you are base camping or staying at a, a campsite for three or four days, you could bring a regular Dutch oven 
and do this. You could make a lot of one pot meals. Dutch ovens, even though they're heavy, the regular ones, you know, they're really worth it if you're going to be base camping. So in the middle of the slides here is the, are the blueberry scones that I made. So I made them for dessert one night and then we had the rest of it for breakfast the next day. So it was really, it was really a great treat. So some people want some flavoring in their water on their trip. And I discovered Mio a few years ago. And maybe some of you have discovered that too. And there's some other brands out there. I believe um, the, oh, the Kool-Aid brand has some um, of the liquid flavoring also. So it's really great. There's lots of different flavors. You just put a squirt in your water and you've got a, a great flavor. Now, on my very first trip back in 1977, we brought a 10 pound bag of sugar with us and Kool-Aid. That's all we had for options. And we just really wanted flavoring. <coughs> Excuse me. And I actually like real tang and I do bring the, they do have the tang in the meal type of flavoring also these days. And then there's coffee. Don't forget to buy ground coffee. Um, one time I brought whole beans and um, we had to put them in a Ziploc and we had to use the back of our hatchet. We called it axed ground coffee. However, today I just received in the mail a really cool hand turning coffee grinder from a friend. And so you can bring whole beans with you on your trip. You could use this coffee grinder and have fresh ground coffee on your canoe trip. So you could bring it with when you're traveling someplace. I, I already tried it out. It's great. Um, so these are on the market. And if you really, really like, you know, freshly ground coffee, you can do it on your canoe trips with something like this. So I'm so excited to try it out. Mm. So thanks so much for listening. I hope you learned something different that you can use on your trip next year. And if you want to get uh, get a hold of me, this is my contact information. I do talk to people about different routes in the Quetico also because I really love going to the Quetico. And I'd really like to thank Midwest Mountaineering for sponsoring today's Outdoor Adventure Expo. This has been really fun to do. And I'd like to say that I could answer any questions. Um, if you have any, and before I do that, just let me say, if you are thinking about giving to the Max Day to different organizations, Friends of the Boundary Water has secured a really large match of $100,000. So any contribution you make will be matched. Remember, we've been around for 44 years. We send kids to the Boundary Waters. We're trying to help um, prevent some mining that we don't think is very safe in the Boundary Waters or next to the Boundary Waters. So if you're at all thinking about donating to any organization, um, think about the Friends of the Boundary Waters. Thank you very much. Let's go back to this slide here. And if there are any questions I can answer, I can certainly do that right now. Kim, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, I put in your contact information in the chat. Um, is there a, a website that people should go visit for Give to the Max? What's a preferred site? Um, yes, it would be the um, the givemin.org okay. slash BWCA. Give to the Max Day. All right. Thank you so much. We had a question regarding the GSI Bugaboo camper set. Someone just asking what it was called. So I mentioned that. I've used that set myself. We have that for our family and we love it. It's kind of all self-contained in one unit. So it stacks up pretty nicely and packs away very efficiently. Right. And there's one for two people and there's one for four people. So yeah, yeah. exactly. It's yeah. Great size. Um, <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. We have. You guys are doing another presentation coming up uh, on Wednesday, the 18th, uh, with Becky Rom, correct? Or is that a different? That's a different organization. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Right. Well, I think there is um, the Friends of the Bonnie Rider is, is also doing a winter camping presentation. I think Dan Pauly's doing that. Yes, correct. Yeah. That's coming up. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's, I've actually seen that presentation. It's really good. If you guys, if anyone's interested in thinking mm -hmm. about going winter camping in the Boundary Waters, you should watch this presentation. Dan has great ideas. He's been doing this for many, many years. He brings um, his family and his friends up. He's, um, and he explains everything and really goes over what kind of gear that you need and what you <clears throat> buy or what you could rent. So it's, um, he does a great job. So I highly recommend that if you're interested in, or you're thinking about going to the Boundary Waters uh, winter camping. Sounds great. Yeah, that'll be on Thursday, November 19th at 7.45 PM. Um, if you do join late to any of these presentations, you can just slide the, uh, the video player to back to the beginning uh, and start from the beginning, which is great. And of course, these are all being recorded and published on our YouTube site and here on the outdooradventureexpo.com site within about two to three days. So um, thanks a lot, Kim. I really appreciate your time and your all your information and your, um, you know, helping to protect the boundary waters. It's a wonderful place. So I hope everyone gets a chance to get up there at some point. Great. Well, thanks. thank you very much for having this um, Adventure Expo and um, everyone have a great day. Thanks, Kim. Bye now.